right, so we bought this North River during the pandemic. It's 2020. Uh, if you go to circlingtravel.com, you'll read all about it. One of the issues that a lot of boat owners have is you have normal size garages. Real estate's a premium, so we've got a trailer situation right now where we are short by just a couple of inches. So we're gonna take you on this project. If you wanna follow me, I'll show you what uh, what's involved here. This is the beginning of the project. We've got literally to make this fit in the garage, the swing tongue bracket that we are going to install, which is gonna require cutting the trailer right here. It's gonna require uh, moving a couple of these bolts here so we've got the trailer safety chain we also have the trailer lighting hole that is going to have to be moved in order for this to make it work but at that time we will be able to just carve out a couple more inches so we can put this and store it in the the garage and so it's going to swing away once you chop scary but once you chop the trailer install this we can now buy ourselves several more inches okay we've got the boat hooked up and i want to show you um a couple of things that we're going to have to do so the length of our safety chain right here as you know we're going to chop it right about here so the safety chain bolt and the wiring hole is going to have to be moved back here. The safety chain is going to have to probably be moved back um, eight inches. Okay, we're on our way to the boat launch. We're gonna free up our trailer so we can start working on our project. And we were just kind of talking about some of the uh, logistical challenges with chopping our trailer. What are the challenges with the aluminum? Well, the aluminum, we got the, got the part I read the install instructions and it said it's not recommended for aluminum um, didn't say absolutely don't do it but likely because it's a softer material and it's a bolt-on product but because the trailer has a three inch by five inch tongue on it uh, the coupler we bought rated for 9,000 pounds and we're only pulling about 4,500 pounds so we're doing half the weight and then we're also going to apply a high-tech bonding agent prior to torquing the bolts down. So we'll have this bonding agent that they claim could do, could hold the whole thing, and then we'll have the bolts in addition to that. So we're thinking we should have a, a good quality installation if we do it that way. And then I guess the only other thing would be a worst case scenario, which will take you on that journey if that happens, but it would just be, we'd have to uh, re basically re-weld the trailer kind of and start over. Right, you'd have to you'd have to weld it back up. If this doesn't work, the only other alternative would be to somehow morph in a steel tongue. But I don't yeah. think we're going to have any problems with it at all.
minor issue that we're going to fix here is that if you notice the three bolt holes there on the hitch, the um, bottom hole, this one here, which of course aligns here, the problem I ran into is I went to torque the top two and they torqued just fine. This one wanted to squeeze the tube and I'm not sure exactly what's going on and whether that doesn't need to be torqued to spec, but what I did just so I can torque it to spec is I made two of these right here. I just got some stock and cut them and I have installed one on the back side of the hole there that you can see and then I'm going to install one on the front side of the hole so I should then be able to get the torque spec the same on the third hole. Kind of a minor thing but I thought I would just take care of that. And that worked perfectly. You got them all torqued down to 50 foot pounds. And the only reason I'm using 50 foot pounds is because I don't know what it is supposed to be is because this one is recommended to be torqued to 50 foot pounds. So figure that'll work. These, by the way, these four here, um, they're supposed to be torqued to 75 foot pounds each. Uh, on steel, which I did. Here we're on aluminum. I went ahead and did 80 foot pounds. Okay, we're done. We've got the uh, swing ton project all finished and we are headed down a two lane road to go put the boat in. So all up, how did it go? Went pretty good. Went pretty good. The only issue I would say is we didn't probably could have used more drill, but the drill that we had had kind of low battery capacity and we had to swap batteries out. But short of that, it went fine. It was definitely doable with just a typical set of hand tools. Right, so would you recommend that someone do this if they're thinking about it? Sure, sure. I think the only thing that I questioned before doing it was getting the hydraulic brakes hooked back up because I just had never done that, but I just bought an inexpensive um, brake line flaring tool and a couple of fittings, and it was really very easy to do. Cool, and if anyone has any questions, they could always contact us and get you to answer any specific questions sure. so uh, the great thing about this is we can fit this boat into our garage all winter today is October 25th it's 45 degrees I am bundled up and we're gonna take the boat out we're gonna do some testing um, the new mufflers you put in which is another one another project um, but just to be able to put that boat back in our garage is a cool thing so you don't have to take it to storage or anything like that. Yeah. So it's still back, back there. So far, so good. You just got to test, uh, make sure the brakes are good. <laughs> they seem to work. Yeah. All right.